Welcome everyone, thank you for joining me for another Diecast Emporium review. We're going to go through this pretty rapid fire here, so... This is my 187th scale or HO scale Diecast fire uh, truck, equipment, apparatus, call it what you will, collection. Been a little over a year and a half since I've had the opportunity to do this. I know you guys have been wanting one, so... Without wasting any more time, let's start with the U.S. Forestry Fire Fleet. So we are looking at a Bowley F-150. Now, ironically, this is not HO or 87 scale, although they were marketed as such. This is 172 scale. However, if you hide it out in your forest diorama or on your train layout, and it's far enough away from some of the HO scale larger trucks, you can get away with it. So that is the Ford F-150, based on like a late 90s version. Here's a custom I saw on eBay, I think around Christmas last year, that I just had to pick up. I thought it was really cool. Uh, this is like an old Matchbox 5-ton truck that uh, some gentleman or some lady put a whole lot of time and effort into it as a repurposed fire service vehicle. I think it looks really good. There's quite a lot of details on the back and up on top. Uh, it kind of has the same body as those Bully, you know, brush pumper type setups, but a little bit more work done into it, and I uh, just thought it looks really, really good, so I picked it up and added it to the fleet. Obviously topped off with the fact that it is weathered, which is uh, not something you see a lot on my models. All right, next up is a River Point Station. Uh, I think this is a Ford F-350. I don't know. could be F-250 or, or F-550. I don't know, uh, but it's a large Ford Mini Pumper. Again, in the U.S. Forestry Service color. I think it looks really, really good. like the hoses, like the hose reel at the back, even like the little bumper. River Point Station always does a really good job of uh, packing a lot of detail and depth into their trucks. Now, they do make a pickup truck version uh, in Forestry Service, which I have not been able to find for a decent price that didn't involve mortgaging the house. So uh, once I find one of those for a decent price, I might just pick up one of those. But this does the job just fine. All right, next up we have two Walther's Bowley International Mini Pumpers. Now, both of these actually did not have the decal on the door, so I printed those up and uh, just added it. I think it gives it a lot of authenticity to it to have the the National Forestry Service on it. Um, even added one back here to the one with the rear mount pump. Particularly I like this one because it has that brush guard which obviously you would see on any vehicles that are going into the brush to fight wildfires. But I think it looks really, really good. You guys let me know down in the comment section below which ones of these you like. If you have any suggestions or comments, please feel free to fire away and I will address them and answer them in a timely fashion. So really the last of our uh, U.S. Forestry Service vehicles, at least in that color scheme, is this GMC Tanker. Um, they did make internationals with tanker bodies. Again, this was one that I found late last year, so I quickly picked it up. Now the one that I'm really missing that I would like to add is a fire crew um, bus, if you will, or a fire crew truck hot spots truck now, i do have this one as i bang it into the display table but this is really in a cal fire red it doesn't really match the rest of the fleet so i'd like to find one of these in green i do have one of these sealed but i kind of want to keep it sealed so i'd like to find one in green and uh open it up and put it with the rest of the collection for display there you go guys that is the forestry service collection let's get into some vintage stuff shall we First up, these serve as my, um, kind of my volunteer fire station on my layout. And really when I have a chance to show you guys my layout, which actually would all be laid out at once, um, I think you guys would really appreciate it. But for size and space constraints, I can't have everything set up at once. But anyway, back to the trucks. So all of these are going to be Athern or Athern, technically either way is correct. Um... Fire trucks. So this is an engine. This is a Ford C-Series. Uh, there's actually two engines of these that I have. This is more of a longer engine. Uh, this is more of a compact rig. But both have monitors up on top. Both have, you know, the ladders on the side. Really highly detailed pieces. And that's why really any of the Athern or Athern trucks 
uh, can go for extremely high amounts of money. I mean, they used to be like $25 or $20, and now it's not uncommon to see some of the rare ones go upwards of $100, $150, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. So those are the two volunteer engines. We have a Mac engine. This, I believe, is from the late 40s. I could be wrong. It doesn't say anywhere on it, but I believe that's a B model. And then while that's spinning around, I'll bring out the last two in this fleet. Technically, I should have shown you this one with the engines because it is an engine. But this is a Ford C-Series Telescort, although it may look like a ladder. And that's kind of the whole design or the idea behind the Telescort concept. Um, it did give you a little bit of an aerial rescue platform, but mostly it was designed to be a large attack monitor on top of an engine. So technically, that's an engine, not a ladder. And then last but certainly not least, for the Volunteer Rescue Squad, we have this Ford, I believe it's an 850, uh, walk-in behind old-school, super old-school, heavy rescue body. Now, I came along kind of at the tail end of this period. Some of the um, less funded, I should say, volunteer fire departments in western New York. Some of them had Ford C-Series. Some of them even had an old rescue like this, but it was a C-Series that you'll see later. So I did get to see a lot of these in action in person uh, in the early, early 90s when I was really, really little. But uh, for the most part, these are all relics now and are really uh, designed mostly for show trucks or reserve rigs. Okay, these are two new ones that you guys have not seen before. These are both from Bush, which is a German company. I'm sure most of you are aware of that. This is a tractor-drawn aerial, also known as a tiller truck. Really like this one. They offer this in a couple different variations. I went for the open cockpit variation. They also offer an enclosed one. Really kind of gives you that old-school uh, TDA look to it. Um, they also offer them in a few different authentic fire department liveries. This is really just a black over red, but they offer Chicago, New York. Uh, there's a few other ones as well, but really, really like this truck. Not particularly realistic, at least for me, but you do have outriggers that do go down on both sides. Uh, that one won't come down on the other side, but at least it gives you a good look on this one. But really, really nice looking truck. Now, I don't know what, um, what Bush is thinking, but they have engine labeled all over this. This is clearly not an engine, but maybe something was lost in translation from English to German. I digress. So also, part of that, and these again, in terms of the layout, if you're keeping up, are really reserved for parade rigs or vintage fire truck shows. This is another American LaFrance uh, Bush truck, but this is a engine, very clearly an engine, uh, open cockpit, kind of the West Coast style rigs from the 50s, 60s, 70s, that kind of era, which again, unfortunately, I was not even thought of, but would have been cool to grow up in that era and see these things screaming down the road. Okay, let's get to the last of the unusual stuff. This is a uh, department that I have kind of way off on my layout, um, and this is a yellow department, I call it which really comprises a engine, a quint, not pictured, it's getting some work done to it, and a, uh, a single medical unit or a single medic, which is a GMC top kick. Uh, love this Seagrave truck. Wish they would have done these in just red. I know there's a red with a white stripe and a red with a white cab, but it's not all red. Uh, so this is a casting I'd love to see Scene Masters bring back um, for their fire truck line. There is an FDNY version of this, but those have gotten pretty expensive. So I opted just to go with the yellow line, uh, the yellow version, the white over yellow with the red line. Just think it's kind of unusual and uh, looks pretty good for the really the residential district. Okay, let's get into the massive Red Fleet, which you guys are more than familiar with. Okay, in no particular order, and I beg your pardon beg your patience, whichever way you want to put it. 
probably going to make some mistakes here because this collection has gotten so large that I screw up these unit numbers sometimes and designations uh, or these company assignments. So bear with me. I will start out with the one of the stars of my layout. This is not a mass production truck, which means, of course, you cannot go out and buy it. This was a custom made for me by a friend uh, who the last time I chatted with him, he was not taking any more custom orders. But this is ladder one. It is a 100 foot rear mount aerial ladder truck. Uh, definitely the showcase of any show that I bring this to. The outriggers are functional. You guys, have, I'm sure, have seen that in the HO Files videos, uh, as is the ladder, and it has those simulated reflective stripes on the back. I say simulated because, of course, they're not really reflective, but uh, they look the part really well and look really, really good. Uh, this far surpassed my expectations. Now, I was hoping to have, by the time I did this video, uh, the next, you know, uh, showcase piece for this collection. But unfortunately, due to build times and, uh, you know, the current world situation, my custom model builders were not available. So unfortunately, I don't have the tower ladder done, which I was hoping to have. And I know I said a year and a half ago I would have it. But of course, as I'm sure you guys can understand, the world's been upside down for the better part of two years. So everybody's busy. I get it. It is what it is. Hopefully the next time I do this collection update video, we will have the tower ladder here to show you. But at any rate, here is our frontline service ladder truck. Absolutely love this rig. Even has a nozzle at the end of the ladder. That is basically our main and you know really our, our only modern day ladder truck. Next up are two quints. One is by Walther's Scene Master, which is this one. This one you can buy straight from your hobby shop or off the internet. Uh, this one is an E1 Quint, which is a static model, meaning that, of course, the only thing that works on it are the rolling wheels. The ladder doesn't even raise. Uh, it's quite disappointing, actually. It's a Del Prado model, I believe, and I really wish I would have known that prior to purchasing it because I guess, in other words, what I'm trying to say, it's a complete waste of $25 unless you just want a static Quint truck just to sit on your layout that does absolutely nothing. So those are both of our quints. Again, you guys have heard me talk about quints. Many of you that are watching this are either in the fire service or know the terminology associated with the fire service. Quint trucks do five different things, thus the name. They obviously have a ladder. They have a tank. They have um, other ladders. They have rescue tools. They have their own pumps, their own hoses. They do plenty of things. So these are really the jack of all trades, aside from, of course, your heavy rescue truck. But uh, a lot of fire departments over the past couple decades have invested heavily in quint trucks uh, because they don't have a budget for a proper ladder and a proper engine. So this is a good truck that does both. Okay, moving on. I mentioned heavy rescue, so let's get that out of the way. This is the Walther's Scene Master uh, hazmat truck. For my purposes, this is my heavy rescue truck. I have another unit that you'll see here in a few minutes that uh, is our... Uh, hazardous containment unit. This is our heavy rescue truck. And uh, again, goes out to all working fires or any issue, high angle rescues, all kinds of stuff that uh, you need a heavy rescue truck for. This gets the job done for us. Next up is another custom model that uh, the same custom model maker that made ladder one did this as kind of a surprise for me. This was not part of the order, but it came with it. Uh, this is what's known as a rescue engine. A lot of new departments have invested in these as well. Kind of have, you know, your main pump element for an engine, but also have several compartments back here that may have some tools, jaws of life, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, that you'd need for many rescue calls. So this is Rescue Engine 1. So if you need a big supply of water and you don't have a water source readily available, you call out one of these. This is our tanker truck. Again, this is a custom. It came with, uh, I shouldn't really call this a custom. This is more of a kit bash. It came with an international long nose style cab, took that out, put on, shortened the body a little bit, put on this cab so that it matched the majority of my fleet of modern day fire trucks, which are Spartan cabs. So this is our tanker one, despite the T5 on the side, just ignore that. This serves as our tanker one. All right, let's get into a plethora of engine companies. We have our main engine. This is engine one, which is at uh, fire department headquarters with ladder one, rescue one, uh, all the good stuff. 
This is our newest engine, of course, based on the Spartan cab. This is another one that if you wanted to go to your local hobby or train shop, more than likely you're going to see this hanging on the pegs. This is very easy to find even today. It would be nice, again, if somebody from uh, Walther's or Scene Master or whatnot, abs for whatever reason, is sitting in their desk twiddling their thumbs and they happen to come across this video somehow, uh, that they would make more fire truck castings. Again, they would be very, very well received with the collector community and the model train community so that we have more than just one engine available. All right, that's engine one. Here is engine two, which is a new model. You guys have not seen this before. So this is a um, Seagrave body with an International 7600 cab. This is an old Bowley casting. These have gotten also very, very expensive. This one came with, I believe, a GMC cab, which I swapped out and added a uh, modern International 7600 cab to it. Looks pretty darn good. So this now serves as our frontline engine number two. Engine three is a international Durastar mounted on an old bully casting. Again, housed at uh, station three. And last but not least of our frontline engines anyway, we have engine four, which is the oldest uh, in our active duty lineup, and that's a Crew Cab International 4900, I believe, 1999 model, uh, also from Walther's Scene Master. All right, let's continue on. Okay, now we're going to get into more of our specialized companies. This is what I call an ERV, which is an acronym for Emergency Response Vehicle. This is also at Station 1. This goes out to uh, medic calls, paramedic calls, uh, car accidents, that kind of thing. It does have, you know, its hose supply, uh, some rescue tools, things like that. But obviously it carries a lot of paramedic and first, uh, first response equipment. So this is, think of this as if you're familiar with the old show emergency, this, this is your modern day squad 51 in the real world. A lot of fire departments do have this kind of set up. So loosely, this is what this unit is based off of. Okay, let's get into some stuff in our brush fleet. Now, obviously, we have the forestry service stuff, but in the main fire department, we have our own fleet of uh, brush fire response vehicles. Here is the red, I believe this is a Ford 550, um, pumper, brush pumper. In addition, we have three brush firefighting engines, all different prototypes, all different body styles. The first one is the one I'm not happy with, but it's still a massive work in progress. This is actually a basic matchbox model, which I have pretty intently modified here. It's got the bully wheels. Uh, it's been repainted. The headlights, the front grille have all been redone. I intend to do a lot more with this, but uh, this is the current state of it. So this is our, this is actually brush three. Uh, brush one is this unit. Old crew cab with a rear-mounted large pump, large engine. And here's brush two, a little bit older and a little bit shorter uh, wheel length, but uh, basically the same, same style truck and also not a crew cab. But that's not it for our brush firefighting fleet. In fact, we have a pretty impressive fire dozer set up. Well, we actually have two dozers. Uh, one of which is getting some work done to it, so I didn't bring it out. But you need something to carry that fire dozer around. So we have our fire dozer set up here. And here is our fire dozer one. Now the dozer is a discontinued model by First Gear and 187 scale. It is a uh, International Harvester TD25 in red, obviously. The tractor is a, a Walther's Bully 7600. And the trailer is a Tonkin Replicas Lowboy. So that comprises the majority of our uh, brush firefighting fleet. Okay, let's continue with the specialty units. They're fun. 
Here's another custom. This is a Matchbox Mac MR from way back in the day. This is, serves as basically our spotlight unit. Um, so if we ever need extra light on a call, this one comes out. Um, these lights actually do pop up, which is part of the, you can see it's still a work in progress. Uh, these lights actually do pop up and they will raise. So you can have some extra light on the scene of a fire or the scene of an ongoing emergency should you need it. So that's our portable lighting unit. Next up, we have, this is more or less a supply truck, part of the SOC of the Special Operations Command of the Fire Department. Uh, this does have a whitewater raft on it, which is a little bit oversized. But for the most part, this has a lot of overhauling tools, um, building, that's not the word I want to use, like collapse securing kits. If there's a building that might collapse or partial collapse, this truck goes out, it has equipment that needs to uh, secure the building. This one will do it. So again, not used very much, which is why it's a 1980s or I should say a 1990s Chevy step fan. Uh, but if we need it, we have it. And then we have a um, air mask unit. Again, another new addition to the collection. This is by Bowley, discontinued a number of years ago, unfortunately. But as you can see on the side, Fire Department USAR, which is US, which is uh, the breathing, self-contained breathing apparatus um, unit. So this truck actually could be used for two things. You could use it as the, which is really what we do. We use it as a breathing truck and then also a urban search and rescue truck, which again has some other tools as well, which is your, your USAR name on the side. But again, it's, it's kind of a, it's another tool truck. It's another Mac tools truck. Good way to put it. <clears throat> or snap-on tools truck. Okay, continuing on with our special units. This is our MERV, which once again, as the fire department, the police department, government agencies, and the military like to use, plenty of acronyms, uh, alphabet soup. MERV is Major Emergency Response Vehicle. I think I've got that right. Um, so basically, this can be used as one of two things. So this can be used as a deterrent. So we can deploy these if there is a, a large event in town, like a concert or a sporting event. Uh, we can have this set up just in case something you know terrible goes down. But also, if said terrible event goes down, this serves as a mobile hospital. And essentially, it's a Road Champs uh, bus that I have repainted. Again, from the late 1990s, added a light bar on top. Planning on doing a little bit more than this. I, I want to have kind of a rollout um, tarp or really a rollout tent that can deploy on this. But currently, that far uh, supersedes my modeling skills, especially this small of a scale. So at some point, I'd like to have that. All right. I alluded to it earlier, but this is our hazmat truck or hazmat rig. So everything you have to have in, in terms of hazardous materials response is in this truck. It also has a decon unit, showers, all kinds of fun stuff is in this thing. Just like the real world in the fire service, many of them used repurposed beverage trailers, which is exactly what this is uh, for their hazmat response, especially since the 9-11 era. Uh, this is exactly what this is, pulled by an international Durastar tractor. All right. And our last specialty unit, made by another custom builder of mine, London Drisdale of Cherokee Valley Railroad. Thank you very much for this awesome truck. You can check him out on Instagram. This is our mobile command center. So again, large events uh, or, or a, a call requiring an extended period of time presence, whether it's fire, police, EMS, whatever. Uh, this is really the TOC, the Tactical Operations Center the command center for all units involved. The sides do fold out, which is really cool, like you would see on, you know, maybe your mom and dad or your, your camper, if you are so fortunate. So it is, uh, it's quite a nice setup. It really, really is. All right, let's finish up. Got about a uh, half dozen left or so. 
Well, actually, then we have the reserve rigs. Forgot about the reserve rigs. So this is our boating unit, our white water rescue unit. Uh, the boat is a German boat and trailer from, I don't even remember who it is, honestly. Um, and then obviously the truck, this truck you can get right now, uh, from Walther's Bolt or Walther's Scene Master. It's just an old international stake bed. And in the back, I have some barricades and barricades and pylons and such. Nice little setup. Obviously we use this for water rescues. Okay, let's see our med medical units. We have three med units in order. Medic one, medic two, medic three. Medic one is a international Durastar. Medic two is an older international uh, 4900, I believe. And medic three is a brand new to us GMC top kick. All basically the same body, and these serve as our frontline medical units, frontline ambulances. All of these are based at uh, Station 1, Station 2, and Station 3. Now, I do plan on picking up several more amb ambulances. I don't know why that's so difficult for me to say today. I do plan on picking up several more ambulances for the collection. Uh, typically, you would see in the real world, at least around me, uh, and most cities that I've lived in, you see usually two to three ambulances per house. So that's the goal that I would like to get. All right, on scene command. Italian 1, Italian 2. Those are our chief cars. First one's Crown Vic. Second one, Ford Explorer. Relatively new within the past year or so. Releases from Walther's Scene Master. Again, you can still get these. They did both of these vehicles in a variety of different colors. So you can get this. Uh, not only in a fire color, but also in various different police colors and an unmarked unit. Same deal over here for the Ford Explorer. Okay, let's wrap up the video by taking a look at our reserve rigs. All right, the last four trucks you'll see are, are our reserve trucks. Now, these were all at one point frontline service trucks in our stations, but obviously they have... Uh, served with honor and distinction and done their part, but they have been phased out and or replaced. But if there's ever a need that we need more units, these are there, ready to go. Uh, this is obviously another Aether and Ford C-Series engine. You saw the orange one that is currently in service with the Volunteer Fire Department. Um, no difference between the toolings other than, of course, just the uh, paint that's on it. I would love to find another one of these sealed on card, because this is the only one that I have in my collection. And um, I was so eager. I was so happy I found it. I cracked it open, immediately put it in the collection. I thought to myself, well, it'll be easy to find another one sealed on card one day. And I have not been able to find an all red one sealed on card in the three plus years that I've had this model. So, but I'm not complaining. I'd rather have one open and displayable uh, rather than one sitting on the card for the most part. Okay, these three should all be new. I don't think these have been in any video up till now. We have the red telescort. Again, same thing as the orange one. Nothing different there. I think I did forget to mention, though, that the telescorts come with two outriggers. You see those black pieces right here? You're given two different ones. One that you can just pop in like this so that the truck is shown in a parked or driving position. And then Aethern also gives you another set, which you can pose with the outriggers down so that the truck is working. Really, really cool detail um, and very nice to see. All right, last two. Here we go. We have our Ford F850 pumper, which I think, again, is a new one to this video, uh, this series of video. One thing I, I really appreciate about this truck compared to other engines uh, and other models is the fact that this has the old school, you can't see it right now, but you'll see it in just a second as it rounds the turn. It has the front mounted pump. Uh, I did get to see a few of these, you know, again, when I was young, but I, I was, for whatever reason, I was always enamored by the front mounted pump on engines. I just thought they were really, really cool. Uh, obviously, it's something different than seeing the same side mounted pumps that you'd see on pretty much everything else. And the last truck, here is the Athern Ford C-Series Heavy Rescue. 
Again, a very new addition in terms of, you know, the date that I purchased it to the collection. But in terms of the, the narrative of the story that we're creating here, this is our reserve rescue, uh, but just a fantastic truck. So that'll do it. That will conclude. We kept it pretty close to a half hour. Yeah, we're right at a half hour right now. So that will conclude this video, the 2021 edition of the HO or 187 scale fire apparatus collection. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know which of these is your favorite. If you have any suggestions that you'd like to see that uh, I add to this collection in future videos, also let me know. Until next time, thank you so very much for watching. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you in the next review.